Hi, this is Nikki with Watchmen on the Pod. And today, I'm going to start reading um, Heroes of the Bible. It's a devotional. It's for kids on up. It's by Joshua Cooley. It's 90 devotions to help you become a hero of God. So as we open the book, he's got a dedication. It says, To my four little princesses, may your lives be marked by a total commitment to Jesus, the greatest hero of all time. So let's go. Okay, so here's the introduction. What comes to mind when you hear the word hero? A guy who flies around in a red cape? A superstar athlete who can throw, hit, shoot, or kick a ball better than anyone else? Someone who runs into burning buildings to save lives? A soldier on the front lines fighting for freedom. Ask 10 different people what a hero is and you might get 10 different answers. But, at, but each definition will almost certainly have to do with human achievement and human glory. That's the way the world works. The Bible, though, has very different ideas of what a hero is. The list of people who were great in God's eyes might shock you. The Bible's mighty champions didn't wear flashy costumes, possess superpowers, or drive high-powered vehicles. They didn't inspire action figures, bobblehead dolls, or blockbuster summer movies. Instead, they accomplished amazing things by God's power and for God's glory. Through faith in all their all-powerful creator, they performed jaw-dropping miracles conquered mighty armies, and ruled nations. They defeated giants, toppled towering city walls, and raised the dead. They wrote books of the Bible, started churches worldwide, and proclaimed the good news of God's salvation, even in the face of death. These heroes rocked. Maybe you're thinking, I'd love to be a hero for God too, but I could never do the stuff like that. Those people were way more holy than me. Not true. The heroes of the Bible were regular, ordinary people who stubbed their toes, woke up with a bed, with bed head, and struggled with sin, just like you. They became heroes not because they were super special, but because they humbly lived for God. As Matthew 23:11 says, "The greatest among you must be a servant." These incredible men and women achieved greatness by serving God and others. In this devotional, you'll read about poor heroes, rich heroes, kid heroes, and even a slave hero. You'll learn about bold prophets, powerful kings, a courageous queen, and you'll see that every single one of them was a normal person just like you. Because it's not who you are that matters to God, it's what you allow Him to do through you. As the Bible says, by faith you can move mountains. See Matthew 17.20 Most important, as you read this book, you'll learn about the greatest hero in history, God's perfect Son, Jesus Christ, who loved you so much that He died for your sins, then rose from the dead so you can live with Him forever. Talk about superpowers. So go ahead, turn the page, and get started. Through faith and obedience, you can be a true hero for God, too. That's pretty nifty. All right. So we have day one. A true hero for God. Okay, so I know you can't see necessarily the pages of the book, but the way they've got this set up, it's got day one, and it's got a true hero for God, dot, dot, dot. And then it's going to give us like a little subtitle. Then it's got a hero's tale, decoding the message, and a battle plan. And not to mention a little side thing, a message from headquarters, which is like a memory verse. So we'll start at the top. A true hero for God, dot, 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 believes that God created and rules everything. Message from headquarters. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis 1.1. All right, a hero's tale. Let's try an experiment. First, stand up and do a few jumping jacks to limber up. Maybe some sit-ups and push-ups too. Go ahead, take your time. Done? Good. 
Now close your eyes, take a deep breath, and create an ocean. Now open your eyes. Did it work? No? Okay. Hmm. Maybe try something smaller, like a mountain. Ready? Go. No mountain either? Hmm. Probably still too big for starters. Better try something even smaller, like a hippo or a walrus. Come back when you're done. What's that? You couldn't do that either. Well, let's go super small. Try creating an acorn or a tadpole or even a gnat. I mean a gnat. Perhaps you should wave a magic wand and say hocus pocus or abracadabra. It didn't work, did it? Well, good try anyway. But it's not surprising. After all, you're only human. And humans don't possess the power to create something out of nothing. But there is someone who can. God. Decoding the message. Genesis 1.1 says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That's the Bible's way of saying that before time or life began, God existed. And he created everything. He created the sun, moon, stars, planets, and galaxies. He created the earth and everything in it. The oceans, rivers, land, mountain, trees, plants, animals, and humans. He created everything. Remember how you couldn't even create the tiniest creature? Now consider God's incredible power and limitless creative abilities. He created the entire universe simply by speaking. And if he created everything, that means he rules everything too. He can tell his creation what to do because nothing would exist if it weren't for him. He is an, in, he is an indescribably awesome and powerful God. So this is important to believe. What we believe about the universe's beginning affects everything else in our lives. If you believe that you were created by a random act of nature and not by God, then you'll probably live, live as if God didn't exist. So you don't have to obey a higher authority. You'll think you can do whatever you want because there are no rules. That's a scary thought. But if you believe in an all-powerful, all-knowing creator, that means you were created for a reason. And you do answer to a higher authority. You understand that life isn't all about you. It's about serving the God who created you and learning more about him. It's a wonderful life with meaning and purpose. And that's no hocus pocus. So here's the battle plan. Memorize what God made on each of the six days of creation. You can read about it in Genesis 1, 1 to, to chapter 2, verse 3. So that is the end of day one's devotional. Very cool stuff. So then we will continue and pick up again tomorrow with day two. I hope you guys like it. We will put a link where you can get this book. And we thank you for listening. Have a great night.